Next into the den, a husband and wife team, Jamie and Gemma Pound. They've turned their passion for man's best friend into a business opportunity that's not to be sniffed at. Good luck, Chili. You'll smash it. You don't need the luck, love. We do. <laughs> We love what we do, and we're passionate about what we do, and that makes doing what we do a lot easier. Here we go. Oh, my God. The dog doting duo are fully aware that there is someone else in the building today that also has a penchant for pooches. Excited! We know Deborah's a dog fan, so we're quite excited about putting yeah. this out to Deborah. Um, but to be honest, I think all of them have something that they could give to our business. Yeah as well as their canine companion, the pair come with stacks of self-belief. Yeah, I'm quite confident, otherwise I, I, I don't think I'd have come today. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Dragons. My name's Jamie, and this is my wife, Gemma. We are UK sniffer dogs. We're here today to ask you for £70,000 for a 15% stake in our business. We're course providers for pet dog owners and dog trainers. We have online courses and practical courses specifically in scent detection. The benefits of scent work are endless for the dog and the owner. We liken scent detection to mindfulness for dogs. So sniffing reduces anxiety and stress in dogs. We have brought along today a handler and her dog who is one of our trainers and she's going to demonstrate a little bit about what it is that we teach to the pet dogs. And what we would like is if one of you guys would volunteer to hide um, a couple of scents for our dog, Chili. Is there anybody that's willing to do I'll that? I'll do it. Hey. Stress-relieving scent detection courses for dogs is the canine concepts Jamie and Gemma Pound are pitching. They're offering to hand over 15% of their business in return for £70,000. Perfect. Uh -huh. And with the scents now in place, it's time for a doggy demo. We can obviously visually see that, but dogs don't see red, so the dog will have to use their nose to see it, uh, to find it. Touch. When the dog finds the scent, what they should do is stay on it. So they'll point towards it with their nose. Yes! It's very clear yeah. that that's the scent. <laughs> Well done, Chili. Good. So if you move her on. Yeah. Chili's learned that she gets a reward when she puts her nose in there. Lure her off with a treat, Rachel. <laughs> okay. Come on, Chili. That's Let's it. Search. So I'll... That's it. She can search everything. <laughs> yes, it's good girl. Oh, yeah, well done. Well done, well done, Chili. Good girl, Chili. Oh, well I think you. Chili deserves a round of applause. Oh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and Rachel, of course. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Good Chili challenge over. Peter Jones is first with the questions. And it appears he has some pooch problems of his own to sort out at home. It was quite good to watch. We've just recently, over the last year, got a husky. Mm -hmm. And she just digs everything up. I mean, the damage is just unbelievable. She just chews on everything, has done for a year. Any advice? Digging and chewing can be a stress behaviour. Sorry, is this a personal yeah. one to one? <laughs> Are you having. I, I see could what's sort happening this out here. for you if we have a chat <laughs> after the consultation. <laughs> Sorry, I thought it'd just be nice to No, but it's a good advice. follow on. It's purely selfish. <laughs> <laughs> so, a bit about the business. Um, how long have you been operating and what are your sales? So, UK Sniffer Dogs has been running since 2018, so it's a very new business. In year one, we turned over £13,000. Year two was... <laughs> Isn't it? 60. 60,000 pounds was year two um, turnover. And year three has obviously this been year. a partial year. So £24,000 turnover so far, and net profit is 4000 OK, can you just explain how it works. You send a trainer or you, the dog comes to the trainer. So, um, Rachel is from Manchester and she runs dog training classes. She's come to one of our courses and we've taught her the content to go away and teach. When you train somebody, what percentage do they have to give to you on their income? They do. Nothing. Nothing. How do you operate without getting some form of commission on an ongoing business. Because for me to be really interested or an investor to be interested, you've got to see how 
you're going to get A, some money back, yes. ultimately, and how their business could grow. Could this become, you know, the big... The online... So, the big yeah, business so that we think we that it could become. We have thought about this, and um, the way that we see the business going is more instructors coming through our doors, but also taking it globally. So it would be kind of like a franchise. The entrepreneurs bat back Peter Jones's concerns about how their business can bring in the bucks by outlining a strategy for global growth. Next to try and sniff out if their company could be a cash creator is dog-loving Deborah Meaden. I've got four Vizslas, can you imagine? <laughs> Um, and we actually do use scent training, so I certainly get the need for it. And it isn't just about the dog. It just makes your life so much better when you've got a happy environment for your dog. Um, but I do want to understand the size of, of the business. Now, are there any examples out there in the dog world of dog trainers that have actually turned it into a big business model? <sighs> There's... There lots. are, mm. there's lots of uh, organisations, but the problem is dog training is not regulated. Yeah, no, Okay, no, so no. you don't need to have a qualification to become a dog trainer. Yeah. You can be a retired dog handler and tell someone you're a dog trainer. But that kind of sat behind my question. What we did was talk to other people and we said, we've got this issue, who do you know? Oh, you don't want to go to so-and-so. They're not yeah. very good, but I tell you what, she's brilliant. So it's a very, very word-of-mouth industry because it's not regulated. And I'm also going to probably look for something that's multifaceted. So, again, in our dogs, we found some are scent dogs, some like food reward, one of them likes touch reward. What I want to do is find somebody who can say, this is how to work best with your dog, as opposed to just scent training. Deborah Meaden wonders if the entrepreneurs are being too dogmatic in their approach by only offering one kind of activity for their four-legged friends. Tej Lalvani now wants to find out how the idea for helping to make hounds happy came about. Tell me about how you guys got into this business. So, um, from a child, I've always wanted to work with animals. Um, I was a veterinary nurse. That's when I did my first dog training course, which is where I met my husband, Jamie. <laughs> and then the rest is history. <laughs> um, I used to be an electrician. Uh, so, ten years ago, I was burnt 45% of my body. And it... <laughs> and it put me back. And I was physically hurt, mentally... Uh... Sorry. I had to put myself back together physically, and I had to put myself back together mentally. And my dad, who's not with me anymore, it's even harder, suggested that I got a puppy. Uh, because I was having surgery and all types of different things and physio. And my only way out was getting out with my pup and getting out with my dog. And my dog, who's also not with us anymore, um, he was a difficult dog. He was a hard dog to work. And scent detection was definitely that mindfulness for him. It calmed him down as a dog, made him a lot easier to handle. Um, so I retrained and that's when I met Gemma. And I started following Gemma around on a few courses, and... <laughs> Gemma... Is that technically that stalking? Gemma booked a it course, was a bit. I booked a course, and one thing led to another, and we set up our own dog training business. Um, well, yeah. well, you've been through some hard times, clearly. And, Sorry. Uh, <laughs> no, no, no need to apologise at all, but, uh, but you're here, which is incredible. Jamie reveals personal fortitude by dealing with a traumatic experience and then turning it into a business idea. But will it be enough to convince Deborah Meaden to put her money into this duo's dream? Guys, I'm going to tell you where I am. My heart would love to do this. But I think you've got a structural issue. I almost don't want you to get investment. You might, you might get it today. For you to succeed in what you're doing, you're going to have to have a system, a quality control system, that says when you've actually trained somebody and they go out there and train, that you can check that they are up to wearing your logo and your brand out there. And that's when the whole franchising model becomes really, really complicated. And I promise you, you're going to end up doing the stuff that you do not enjoy about your business because you are going to have to stop training dogs. 
That's the nicest no I've ever heard. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's a, it's a it's, nice it's... no because it's true. I don't even say it with a heavy heart because I think that, in hindsight, you might feel the same. But anyway, okay. uh, I won't be investing. I'm out. Thank you. Thank you, Deborah. Thank you. A nice no, but a first no nonetheless, as Deborah Meaden feels the entrepreneur's plans to franchise are flawed. And it appears Tuka Suleiman also has reservations about the pair's path to profitability. You come across very well, but I've not heard a clear strategy in which it would tell me that in two years' time you were doing a million, two million turnover. So for that reason, I'm out. Um, look, I really like you guys. I think you've presented really well and you know, I think that £70,000 for something where the business model has not been proven yet, unfortunately, it's not an investment for me, so good luck, guys, but I'm out. You two are lovely. But I think this is a great business for you to make money out of this, but not necessarily for me to make money out of this. So I don't think it's, a, it's the right business for me. I'm out. Thank you. Three dragons drop out in quick succession. Only Peter Jones remains. He needs help with his husky. So will he throw Jamie and Gemma a bone? Firstly, inspirational, really fantastic. The journey you've been on and where you've got to, and I actually think you've got a business. I think you've got a business that you can grow yourselves and it will be successful. From my perspective, a business like this, as it scales, it's immediately quite tough because it's really predicated on one or two individuals and there's only two of you. Yeah. And at £70,000 as well, I actually think you've come in with quite a punchy amount of money. If I'm going to invest in something like this, I need to take a much larger slice of the pie. What slice would you like? <laughs> well, <laughs> what are you and, looking and, for? And, and, then it, and then it gets into the fact that I don't want to own so much that it puts our relationship disjointedly. For me, sadly, for that reason, I'm out. And I'll still help you out with that husky. <laughs> Boy, I tell you what, I need help. <laughs> Peter Jones declines the deal and Jamie and Gemma's dreams of investment are over. We don't get to talk to the wall. <laughs> I'll talk to the lift. <laughs> they leave the den without the £70,000 they were seeking or a dragon as their business bulldog. I don't think I've ever been so pleased that somebody didn't get an investment. <laughs> I, I don't think they could believe how lovely you were. We're going to carry on doing what we do best. We've got this far um, on our own. Watch this space. <laughs> <laughs>